Hello, people at Summit, and nice to be here. That's my first time being here, and let's begin. I will just put it, the view as a slideshow, and so, yeah, hello, everyone. We are going to talk today about CPU and memory hot plug, and perhaps how can that be utilized for virtual machine vertical scaling. Now, who am I? I'm a Cube maintainer and developer working on Cube for almost five years, uh, holding the title of Senior Software Engineer in Reddit. So nice to meet you all. What we are going to focus on with regards to CPU and memory hot plug today is basically talking about the Cube World stack and assuming the guest OSs we are running, they have the x86 architecture running a Linux OS. The takeaway from this talk, hopefully, is like the hot plug overview, how it works today, a little bit about its API, uh, the future plans, and the vertical scaling in the glance. Now, how it works today. Let's assume you are a VM owner and you are starting your virtual machine. It starts successfully, and as such, you can see in the status your current CPU topology, which, for example, you have two virtual CPUs which is the course multiplied by sockets, multiplied by threads. And let's imagine the following model. Your virtual machine actually runs in the virtual launcher board. It runs on some node. Now, you have the maximum hot pluggable vCPUs you can uh, add or remove during the virtual machine lifetime. And you have the current active CPUs, which you booted with. Currently, it's like for, as an example, it's two vCPUs. Uh, for example, the VM owner modifies in the VM spec the CPU sockets from two to four. What will actually happen is that the uh, live migration will be triggered, a uh, target pod will be scheduled on the target node. As soon as it's successfully scheduled, the live migration process will begin. And the, when the virtual machine on the target pod will reach the domain active state, which basically means the virtual machine is already running on the uh, node P on the target pod, Build handler will recognize that state and will initiate the sync virtual machine CPU call to libvirt, which will result in increasing the number of virtual CPUs on the virtual machine. And when it all ends up successfully, the status with the current CPU topology will be updated with four sockets instead of two. With memory hotplug, the procedure is basically the same, with one exception. You have in the status the guest boot and current and requested memory. Now, the important thing here, and I marked the virtual machine here in red, is that you cannot resize the virtual machine memory to less than what it was booted for. With This is by, uh, so, so as such, by design, you can but resize it to the maximum of pluggable memory as per your wish. For example, if you modify the spec, domain spec memory guest from one gig to two, once again, uh, the controller will recognize the change, it will update the guest requested me memory and uh, live migration will once again will be started. Target pod will be scheduled on target node, the virtual machine will be run on the target pod and as soon as that happens, the build handler will once again initiate the sync virtual machine memory call. And in that manner, the green, the green bar and basically all upper to the upper bound, you can do the resize, but once again, not to the not resized to the less what you have booted for. And once again, upon successful online memory onlining on the guest, you will recognize the guest current was changed from 1GI to 2GI, also as the requested one. But the guested boot will remain 1 gig. Now, let's talk a bit about the whole plug API. <coughs> yeah, so. So when we were designing the hot plug, uh, memory and CPU hot plug, we had some challenges because the goals we wanted to achieve, we had simplicity in mind and we wanted the API to be declarative. Now by simplicity, I mean that we didn't want to expose the user with too much implementation details. We want the API to be clear and simple as possible. Now in the declarative manner, we wanted to achieve persistency by manner that when you initiate the hot plug, the hot plug change will remain in the virtual machine object and then you will survive the boot cycles and remain persistent with the VM. Now, the problem was is that by design and by the guiding principles, the VMI spark was immutable and now we had to open it. Now, 
open it, the whole spec didn't make much sense because there are fields that are not live, live updatable and working on per field basis in the controller could be very cumbersome and not flexible. And even the live updatable fields, they are not always live updatable. For example, imagine we had the constraint of maximum CPU and maximum memory. So not always you can do that live update. You will have to either deny the, uh, the admission will deny the update because the maximum number of sockets and the CPU will have to be uh, updated till the next uh, boot. And until then, we have to keep these changes in stage after till the next boot. Now, if we take a brief look on the hot plug API overview, you can see that the CPU hot plug and memory hot plug, they landed on different releases. So basically since release 1.1, you can have them both. But I also mentioned here that VM rollout strategy, because since it landed and released in 1.2, we had some breaking uh, changes with, the, with regards to the hot plug API. So until so from release one zero to one one, you had the per VM uh, APR. So you, you could uh, configure hot plug on a per, per VM basis with the VM spec live update features. And we wanted to duplicate uh, that approach because it couldn't be flexible because imagine that tomorrow you have another uh, field that you can dynamically uh, update uh, to make it live updatable. And then each time we had to uh, update the VM API, this just doesn't, doesn't make sense. We want it to be uh, more uh, like eventually consistent. So the user can change whatever field uh, he desires and we just uh, behave according to uh, some global policy like you have with the, the deployments, you have the rollout strategy. So we embraced the same approach. We we defined a new way called a VM roll, rollout strategy and you can configure this uh, on a cluster level basis. It means that all your VMs on the cluster will either behave like in live updatable manner or in staged manner. If you will configure stage, it means that hot plug will not work. Every change you will make on the VM will just have to wait till the next uh, boot cycle. Now, uh, the future plans. So first of all, uh, to maybe to integrate with the in-place pod updates. And uh, this is uh, an ongoing uh, Kubernetes cap, which means that uh, you can uh, now mutate pod, pod resources uh, in terms of memory and CPU requests. And this is really nice because we can very benefit from it because here, if you uh, remember what I presented you, the live migration makes your VM, it constrains you to have your VM live migratable, which is not always true, not all the configurations of a VM are live migratable. Now with in-place update, you don't have such a constraint and you will also spare yourself from uh, live migration, which is a cost operation by itself. Perhaps you also want to, to, to opt in for hot plug, but still, you want to do some affinity to your nodes because you have some special devices. And open discussion about supporting uh, multiple guest OSs and multiple architectures. It's something that all, also we can perhaps benefit and expose, to expose our uh, project to uh, ARM and maybe to other OSs other than Linux. Now, with vertical scaling, it's, it's not there yet, but I just uh, came with an idea that now that we have the hot plug API, we can uh, embrace the simplicity and uh, to create just two sub resources for the VMI. Since you know, Qubit has the built API, so we're all, already extending uh, the API of future machines. We can create the scale and the metrics APIs, uh, sub resource APIs, and manipulating them for uh, automating or manual uh, vertical scaling. And also by exposing these sub resources, you don't have, uh, in terms of RBOC, to have a complete control over the virtual machine spec. So you can separate the permissions from, you know, from the VM owner to other administrator, for example, cluster administrator or scale administrator, you, know, you name it. And Weird Handler can expose these metrics with the get domain stats like we do today. We Weird Handler has a, a web server that communicates the console of the virtual machine, the VNC. So I think the same approach can be reached with uh, exposing metrics, the uh, resource metrics of CPU and memory. 
With regards to Hornblock, I, I would like uh, to have special thanks to Antonio J. Rubo and Vladik, who spent a lot of time on uh, reviewing the design proposals and the PRs that uh, made, made, made it happen. And yeah, still uh, a lot of interesting work to do. Yeah, and I guess that was fast. So if you have uh, some questions. There is one question in the Q&A. Can we do hot plug CPU memory on the same node? For virtual machines using local storage, would this work? Meaning it would trigger live migration for the M to another node, migrating yes. local storage to another node at the same time. So yeah, that's exactly why, why we want to integrate with the in-place uh, pod updates that will spare us from uh, having this live migration. We can, then we can preserve the node of infinity, the PM to node of infinity. But it's, it's still, because the in-place pod up is still, I think it's alpha and Kubernetes who will have, uh, uh, we, we want to, perhaps we want to maybe G8 before the in-place. But uh, yeah, there, there will be an open discussion about it in the community. I can't see any more questions in chat. If you do have a question, uh, now is the perfect time to ask. Uh, we've got uh, plenty of time for our next session. Um, That's nice. So anyway, you can uh, uh, reach out to the Qubit Slack or Kubernetes virtualization Slack and ask anything you want. Uh, then I will step my, stop my sharing. Ah, okay, I will stop. So, okay, looks like I can give plenty of time back to you and enjoy your coffee or tea. Well. Thank you very much, Igor.